Glory to God. Well, today I want to begin sharing with you on the knowledge of the holy. Because this being our first fruit month, it's important for us to appreciate holy things that make the presence of God to work with us in the various areas of our lives, especially in the areas of our well-being in life and in prosperity. Because the Bible says in 3 John chapter 1 and verses number 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Glory to God. And so it's only important for you to know the knowledge of the holy, the things that are holy to God, or the things that are holy, the holiness of God, so that you are able to appreciate Things that are of value that will cause the presence of God either to stick with you or you are able to avoid the things that will cause the presence of God to depart from your life. Glory to God. And so we are going to begin by looking at the book of St. John chapter number 4. St. John chapter number 4 verses number 23 and 24. St. John, it says, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Verses 24, read it for me. The Bible says, God is a spirit. God is not a human being. God is a spirit. He is a spirit being. And the Bible says, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Glory to God. What does it mean to worship God in spirit and in truth? To worship God in spirit and in truth simply means to worship God according to the prescribed order of God. And what is the prescribed order of God? The prescribed order of God is the word of God. Because the word of God is the will of God. You want to know the will of God? Turn to the word of God. Hallelujah. When you get to know the word of God, you have gotten to know the will of God. And so when God says that we worship him in spirit and in truth, he's telling us that we worship him according to his word, the way that has been laid by God. Now, what is the knowledge of the holy? Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 18. Deuteronomy 8 verses 18. Everybody, let's read it together. One, two, go. For it is he that gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which you saw unto your fathers, as it is this day. Glory to God. Now, the Bible says, you shall remember the Lord your God. What is the knowledge of the holy? This is having an awareness and knowledge of God's sacred offerings and principles that will either draw you to his presence or keep him away from you. It's having an awareness of the principles that God has set in place. As far as his offerings are concerned, that will either draw you closer to him or that will keep him away from you. You must have that awareness. When you are conscious of him and you know of what he wants you to do according to his principles, his presence gets closer to you. And on the other hand, when you ignore the principles, because this you shall remember, meaning that there is a tendency to forget, you can also forget. When you forget about them, then his presence departs from your life. Glory to God. Now, there are basically four major offerings of God when it comes to the knowledge of the holy. Hallelujah. And today I'm just going to give you a general overview of all these principles. And then afterwards, I'll be able to get into details about them. What are these four basic offerings of God that God has put in place? 
Of these offerings, by the way, two are compulsory, the other ones are optional, and one is based on conditions. What are these? Number one is the fast fruit offerings. The fast fruit offerings. What is a fast fruit by definition? This is the first and the best of your income or any God given increase. For example, the first salary that you receive in a month, the first profits that you make in a month, the first salary in a job, the first anything that comes as the first in your life, the first and the best of it belongs to God. Hallelujah. All the increase. For example, if you realize you've been, you've been getting salary of 5 million shillings and then all of a sudden your salary is increased to 7 million or your profits before you used to earn 3 million shillings and all of a sudden your profits rise from 3 million to 10 million. The difference that comes in between, between the 3 million to the 10 million and the difference that comes between the 5 million to 7 million, that difference becomes your fussy fruit. Hallelujah. Now, this offering is given in honor of God as your deity. We will talk about it later. But let me mention another one. Is the tithes. The second offering of the knowledge of the holy that we must know is the tithing. What is a tithe? A tithe is simply one tenth of all your income. One tenth of it belongs to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, you shall give God your tithe and he will cause a blessing to rest upon your house. Now, this tenth, the major purpose of it is to cause a circumcision of all your blessings and to keep the covenant of God running over your life. The covenant of his good will towards you. Hallelujah. Meaning that everything that you get, one, two, three, four, five, six, the tenth of it, you put it aside and you give it to God. Amen. Let's say, for example, you get income of one million shillings. One million divided by ten equals to a hundred thousand. That a hundred thousand belongs to God. It doesn't belong to you. The nine hundred thousand, that is yours. The the hundred thousand belongs to God. Amen. The third offering is what the Bible calls the holy offerings. The holy offerings or the free will offerings or the worship offerings. It's all the same thing. This is an offering that you give to God out of your free will. Every time that you appear in his presence because you are saying you shall not appear before me empty handed. And the reason why God asks for a free will offering from us always is so that he can transfer his power into your life. Hallelujah. He will always look for a point of contact to transfer his power into your life. Amen. Then the other one is a special seed or a sacrifice or a vow offering, whatever it may be. Whether a vow, a sacrifice, a special seed, uh, whatever that you can call it. Depending on the circumstances that you're giving it. This is an offering that you give according to the application of the life principle. It's expression of your faith according to the life principle of whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. Glory to God. Every time that you're giving this kind of offering, either a seed or a fussy fruit, uh, not a fussy fruit, but a seed, a sacrifice, a vow, uh, a special seed, whatever it is, it is an application of your faith according to the seed principle of life that whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now, I just need to give you general knowledge on what every Christian needs to know about God's offerings. God's offerings. What are these offerings? I'm talking about all these four offerings that I've mentioned to you. I want to give you the general view. What is God is, what you need to know about them. Either a fussy fruit or a tithe or a special seed or a sacrifice or a free will offering. 
you know, what you need to know about them. Now, of these offerings, the tithe and the first fruits are compulsory offerings. To every child of God that belongs to the kingdom of God, whether you're a pastor, whether you are a deacon, whether you are a church member, whether you've just gotten saved, whether you have a job or you don't have a job, there are two offerings that are compulsory. That is the giving of fast fruits and the giving of tithes. The other offerings are optional. They are optional. A free will, you decide it by yourself. What you want to give God out of your free will. A sacrifice, a vow, or a special seed. You give it based on the conditions that you're going through. It's not compulsory that all the time you have to give it. It's based on the conditions that you're going through in your life. Now, what are the general things that you need to know about God's holy offerings? Amen. Number one is that God's offerings are holy. They are holy. This simply means that they are secret and have a special attachment with God. God has a special attachment with an offering. Every time that you're giving God a fast fruit, every time that you're giving God a tithe, there is a special attachment that God has with it. Amen. Number one is that God receives honor. He feels honored. Every time you give this offering, God feels honored in his life as God. He feels honored. Amen. And then number two, they smell as a sweet savor to him. They smell so sweet to him. And that's why the Bible says in Genesis chapter number eight, verses number 20 and 21. The Bible says of a man by the names of Noah. It says Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelt a sweet savor. The Lord smelt a sweet savor. When Noah built that altar, we know that our God lives in heaven. You know, we, we are not sure even if, if the smoke clicked the clouds. But the moment Noah built this altar and he put an offering upon it, the Bible says God smelled something sweet. It was sweet to God. Hallelujah. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses number 9 and 10. Proverbs 3, verses 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. It says, honor the Lord. That simply means God feels honored. Every time you give him your substance, every time you give him your first fruit, he feels honored. He receives honor from you every time that you give it to him. Hallelujah. The second thing that you need to know about fussy fruits, tithes and seeds offerings, that they are exclusive to God. They are entirely God's property, if I may put it like that. In the book of Leviticus 27, 30, Leviticus 27 and verses 30, the Bible says, and all the tithes of the land whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. God does not say let's share it. He says it is the Lord's. It's exclusive to the Lord. And that's why he set the principle in Genesis. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. Genesis 2 17 from 16. Let's begin from 16. God told uh, he told Adam, he says, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Hallelujah. That means that God has said, when it comes to tithe, when it comes to fussy fruits, especially tithes and fussy fruits, because these are compulsory offerings, they don't belong to us. They belong to him. Amen. Glory to God. And that is something which is exclusive to God. It's exclusive to God. It doesn't belong to us. 
And so when it comes to tithe, when it comes to fussy fruits, it is actually a payment you are doing. You are not doing God a favor to do it. It belongs to him. You simply pay it back to him. And that's why he says, pay your tithes, pay. It doesn't say, you know, uh, offer. No, it says pay. Pay simply means it belongs. It's, it's an entitlement. He's entitled to it. So to a Christian, every time when it comes to tithe, when it comes to fast fruits, consider that it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. Amen? Amen. Number three, every time you give your fast fruits, your tithes, and your offerings, you are offering worship to God as your deity. You are offering worship to God as your deity. You know, when you're saying that God is your deity, you are simply testifying that he's the one that goes ahead of you to secure your blessings. Deuteronomy, 20, Deuteronomy 26 from verses 1. Deuteronomy 26 verses 1 says, And it shall be when you are come in unto the land which the Lord your God gives you for an inheritance. Hello? Are you hearing me? Yes. It shall be that when you come into a new job that God has given to you, when you come into a business and your business is profiting, that the Lord your God is helping you. When you come into a place where somebody gives you an offer and says, go and make your hair, it is one million. And you never solicited for it. He says, Listen, this is the land of your possession. Is your deity taking care of you? He has a million ways of taking care of you. Are you hearing me? He can give you a job. He can give you a business. He can favor you. He can ask someone to take care of you. He has so many ways of taking care of you. He's not a God who's limited by only one way. He says, and it shall be when you are come in unto the land which the Lord your God gives you for an inheritance and possess it and dwell therein, that you shall take of the first of all the fruits of the earth, which you shall bring of your land, that the Lord your God gives you and shall put it in a basket. And you shall go unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose to place his name there. Verses 3. And you shall go unto the priest that shall be in those days and say unto him, I profess this day that the Lord your God, that I, that I have I'm come unto the country with the Lord so unto our fathers to give unto us. Next verse. And the priest shall take off the basket out of your hands and shall set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall speak and say before the Lord your God, Assyrian ready to perish was my father, and went down into Egypt, and sojourned there with a few, and became there a nation, great and mighty and purposeless. And the Egyptians even treated us, and afflicted us, and laid upon us hard bondage. And when we cried unto the Lord, the God of our fathers, the Lord had our voice and looked on our afflictions and our labor and our oppression. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders. And he has brought us into this place and has given us this land, even a land that floweth with milk and honey. And now behold, I have brought the first fruit of the land which you, O Lord, have given me and, shall, and you shall set it before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. Hallelujah. So every time that you give a tithe, every time that you give a first fruit unto God is an act of worshiping God as your deity. When you're saying God is my deity, you are saying I am not where I am by my own effort, by my own knowledge. I am not where I am because I am well connected. But there is God who considered me, who works in the invisible realms to create opportunities for me to bless me where I am. Hallelujah. That is the testimony of worship that you're giving unto God. Amen. Amen. Number what now? Holy offerings are given by God to us as a ransom of our lives and destiny. God gives them to us 
as a ransom of our lives and our destiny. Every time that God asks of you of an offering, this normally comes especially to vows, special seeds, even tithes, even tithes. Every time that you're giving this kind of offerings, it's a ransom of your life and your destiny. What this simply means is that you are buying your life. You are buying your destiny. There are so many devourers. You need to know that on this earth, there is a curse of the earth. The curse of the earth is roaming, devouring people. There are lands that devour men. There are things that have been set in the realm of the spirit that certain people should not cross certain lines of blessings. That you should not reach certain levels. Certain years of your life you should never see them. These are things that have been set in the realms of the spirit. But God has given us a way to navigate them. And the way of navigating around these things is through the holy offerings of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 30. Exodus 30 verses 12. Exodus 30 verses 12. The Bible says, And when you take the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Lord. When you number them, that there be no plague among them. When you number them. You see, he says everybody should give a ransom. The mo because the moment you number them, there is a plague that is appointed unto them. But when everybody gives a ransom, they survive that plague. And that's why Proverbs, Proverbs 13 verses 8, Proverbs 13, 8. Proverbs 13, 8 says, The ransom of a man's life are his riches, but the poor here is not rebuke. It says your riches have been given by God to you to ransom your life. To ransom your life. You must know that life is spiritual. Nothing happens to you by accident. There are things that want you dead. That want you poor. That want you frustrated. They come in different circumstances and situations. They want to frustrate your destiny. But the Bible says your ransom is in your riches. Glory to God. One of the examples of ransoming is in Genesis chapter 8. Noah is the one who taught us about ransoming. Genesis chapter 8, verses number 20 to 21. Genesis 8, 20 to 21. The Bible says, And Noah built an altar unto the Lord. This is after the flood. Everybody had been swept off the earth. Noah had survived alone, him and his children. He can you imagine in the whole planet earth, there were only eight human beings on earth. Everybody is dead. And Noah was panicking. He didn't have a colleague to talk to. He didn't have a friend. He was alone by himself. And God gave him wisdom to ransom the earth. So that he doesn't have to go through the same calamity that it went through. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord. And took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl. And offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelt a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again cast the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imaginations of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I smite anymore everything living as I have done. Glory to God. Glory to God. In this part of the world, we must work hard to ransom our lives. One of the things that if you really want to know that a curse exists, look around your neighborhood. Look around Africa in general. The richest continent which has over 80% of the world's resources that are sustaining the whole world. But what is the trend in Africa? It is either war, bloodshed, disease, poverty, failure, frustration, not that we are not hardworking. Some people say we are lazy. We are not lazy. We are hard workers. But I want you to know there is such a thing as a curse. 
Others walked, they broke that curse. And their children are enjoying the blessing. The African man was busy on juju, witchcraft, idolatry, slavery. I will tell you one of the reasons why nine tithers don't prosper. Why it is difficult. And not, not one, but seven reasons why a nine tither cannot prosper. It doesn't matter how much wealth he accumulates. He cannot prosper. Seven reasons why it is impossible for somebody who does not tithe to prosper. There are many things, especially we here. Can you imagine? Slave trade, where did it happen from? It was here. Do you know that there is a very big curse? Very big curse of slavery. And our fathers participated in all these things. And they earned the curses on them and their children. Them and their children. And there are so many things. The moment blood is shed, innocent blood is shed, the Bible says blood will always cry out, seeking for revenge. Can you imagine how many wars were fought? How much blood was shed? How much our land is defiled with idolatry, witchcraft, and so on. Now you wonder why there are so many rampant diseases that easily kill and destroy. You wonder why there is so much poverty. You can actually smell it. Smell it on the air. You can smell it. Hallelujah. But God has given us a way out of ransoming our lives. And that is through offerings. Amen. Amen. By an offering, you can save your life from a calamity. You can save your life from a curse. You can save your life from anything that destroys human life on earth or destinies. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. On Wednesday, don't miss. I'm going to dwell so much on 20 spiritual problems of people that don't give offerings. 20 spiritual problems. If they don't participate in tithes, they don't participate in offerings, they don't participate in, you know, fasting fruits. There are 20 spiritual problems that are connected with them. Make sure that you don't miss service on Wednesday. Amen. I have a lot to share with you concerning prosper. Remember, it's our year of supernatural wealth transfer. Amen. You need to get to know them. And uh, you can ransom your life. You can save your life from disaster. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. One time a lady came to me with a child that was blind. Born totally blind. And while I looked at the child, the Spirit of God tells me, say, tell that lady to give an offering. It's, it looks very strange to ask someone who's suffering of that nature to ask for an offering. You know, humanly speaking, it was very difficult to open my mouth to tell her. But because the Holy Spirit had told me, I said, woman, you want your child's eyes to open? Go and get the best offering. Give it to God. The eyes will open. The lady went. The following day, she came with an offering. She gave an offering to God. I prayed for the child. The eyes of the child opened up. Now you may ask, why? You know, why, why did it happen like that? Because even a year later, the child's eyes were still open. The kid was still seeing, perfectly healthy. Amen. Now, why did it happen like that? God wanted a ransom. Amen. It means that blindness could have come as a result of something. And the only way to reverse that thing is an offering. Amen. Amen. 